Technological innovation has transformed the way we communicate and is set to change the urban landscape in Singapore. The next generation of buildings will be a lot smarter thanks to the increasing convergence of new data streams, sensor technology and breakthroughs in building material science. In Spotlight this week, Wong Siu-ing takes a look at how Singapore's Smart Nation initiative can help shape the way we live and work. Singapore has come a long way since horse-drawn carriages plied Commercial Square in the mid-19th century. The area was later renamed Raffles Place and it still stands as Singapore's prime commercial district. Skyscrapers have replaced many old buildings, but experts say they could themselves be transformed as society's needs and technology evolve. Starting from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and every decade, we have uh, different needs of the society that uh, the architecture or, or the urban planning try to fulfill. From the basic needs in the 60s to a more like uh, social needs in the 80s and 90s when you talk about identity, when you talk about tropical architecture, what is Singapore architecture, and to the 2000s when we talk about sustainability, livability, and so on. Singapore's built environment has evolved in the past decades and in the last 10 to 20 years, there's a greater focus on sustainable development, improving accessibility in buildings, as well as boosting labour productivity in the construction sector. One key initiative that has taken off is the Green Mark Scheme, launched by the Building and Construction Authority in 2005 to encourage developers to adopt more environmentally sustainable practices. The number of green buildings in Singapore has grown from just 17 in 2005 to more than 2,100 today. Buildings are getting greener and industry players say they could get a lot smarter too in the not so distant future as new technology becomes integrated with building design. A big part of it will ride on Singapore's Smart Nation initiative with greater use of data analytics and a range of infocom and media technologies. And developer Capital Land says it's open to new ideas which innovation may bring. With your phone you can control uh, your switches, your washing machines or your ovens. And in the States they are, out, they, they are also intelligent enough nowadays where the fridge can tell you that it's time to buy a new carton of milk because you're running out. Or the moment you step in it remembers what you have, the music you like or the lighting level you like and it will just automatically turn it on to accommodate what you want. I think uh, we're certainly keen to explore all these ideas and tap on latest and newest technology to, to keep up with the, what the market wants. Capital Land, meanwhile, highlights the potential for sensor technology to offer optimized energy usage solutions in commercial buildings. Imagine we can put in sensor in such a way that if the system detected that there are heavier uh, people workload in a particular floor or a particular corner, then more aircon cooling capacity will be blown to that location to make it cooler. Whereas for meeting room, for example, is empty, they have not been occupied, then there's no need to pump in all the cold air over there. Imagine we can have developed a system that can automatically do this. That will save a lot of cooling load and yet at the same time still provide comfort for the occupier. Arup, a global multidisciplinary engineering and consulting firm, has pieced together what buildings could potentially look like in 2050, where the world's population may hit 9 billion, with 75% living in cities. Arup projects that buildings in the future are not passive shells, but rather living and breathing structures plugged into the smart urban infrastructure. It will boast a network of sensors that provide real-time data to the building system, allowing it to respond accordingly to environmental changes. And the city will be seamlessly linked by cable cars. Arab says skyscrapers of tomorrow could comprise modular components, which can be rearranged or assembled by robots. The buildings will also be able to harness energy and convert carbon dioxide into oxygen. At the moment, there are trials for solar paint. So we'll be able to paint our buildings with solar technology. 
So if you can imagine all of our buildings being able to harness energy, the effect that will have in the sustainability of our buildings and the look and feel of our buildings, it, it's amazing. And I think has huge potential is using buildings for food production. So we're developing, again, facades and skins of buildings that can not only act as story, energy storage elements, but can also act as, as food generation elements. Many of those features uh, that are proposed for this building in 2050 are happening now. I mean, we can give you many examples like rainwater collection, recycling and uh, energy generating lift. Uh, although we have not put everything together in one single building, going forward, if we can integrate more and more such sustainable practice for our buildings through our green mark system assessment uh, and, and, and checking and performance, I think we are, we are, we are going to, be, to get there quite soon. We probably don't have to wait until 2050. But as the city changes over time, there's also a need to preserve buildings of architectural significance or are representative of its time. The Singapore Institute of Architects says it's keen to work with the Urban Redevelopment Authority or URA to look into it. Perhaps uh, URA could start thinking to say that every 10 years we have a concerted effort on let's review you know, the top 10 buildings of the past 10 years and give it some form of status. Yeah, so that would be one way to actually preserve the, 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 the better architectural buildings for generations to come. And perhaps some of the first generation HDB flats, I'm not talking about the SIT flats, because to my mind, um, you can, when you talk about the architectural character of Singapore, you cannot divorce it from the HDB, because uh, nowhere in the world you find public housing of that kind of scale. The Institute also suggests that incentives be provided to encourage developers to free up the first two storeys of new buildings, turning them into public spaces with parks or atriums to enrich the quality of life in the city. As waves of technology sweep across Singapore, the urban landscape will continue to change, just as Raffles Place did from the 1980s till now. So this skyline today, iconic as it is, may well look very different in the not-too-distant future. <laughs>